What is good everybody, this is Tejo and welcome back to the Lo-Fi Loft. Today we are continuing our Ableton Live for Beginners series. My goal with this series is to make the most approachable, the most accessible series for using Ableton Live. I wanna build you up from a solid foundation knowing absolutely nothing about how to make music in Ableton Live to actually being able to produce your own music in the DAW. So if you haven't yet, make sure you go back and watch episodes one and two of this series before you jump into this one. We've already covered the basics of navigating around the program and also recording some basic musical ideas into Ableton Live. And today we're gonna dive into adjusting those sounds. How do we mix our volumes? What are send and return tracks? Panning, some macro knob stuff, important things to know, especially for a beginner if you're trying to get your music to sound good. Today's video is sponsored by DistroKid. I'll tell you a little bit more about them later in the video, but for now, let's get into Ableton Live. Okay, so as usual here, I have loaded up Live's default template. If for some reason, when you open up Ableton Live, it doesn't look like this, you can go over to templates and load up default Live set so that it matches and you can follow along more easily. I'll also mention again, like I have earlier in the series, but I have Ableton Live Suite, which is the biggest version of Ableton Live you can have with the most features, but I'm going to try to limit myself to features you all might have access to in the more limited versions. There is a free version of Live out there, so you can get that if you wanna follow along, but there is also a fully functional free trial of Live Suite, which I definitely recommend using if you're following along with this series. All right, so since we've already covered how to create musical ideas, let's just quickly do that. Let's lay down a drum idea first. Now I could go to drums and pick one of these kits. Right now I'm actually gonna go to packs, which another thing to know is that Ableton actually has a lot of free packs available on their website. One of them being this drum pack recording hybrid kit. Um, and just to make things easy, I'm gonna load up one of these kits, click and drag it onto my first available MIDI track. The track is already armed, and today I have my MIDI controller here. I have my Akai MPK Mini, but as we've covered in previous installments, if you don't have a MIDI controller, you can click this button up here in the corner, which will enable you to use your home row of your keyboard, or the keys on your keyboard, I should say, to input notes. But I'll be using my MIDI keyboard today. Of course, the first thing we want to do is set our tempo. I'll click up here and set it to maybe 90 BPM. This is all stuff we've covered in the previous lessons. I've turned my metronome on so I have a click track and I'm going to record a session clip. Let's go ahead and do that really quick. Great, and I hit spacebar to stop recording and we have a nice even two bar loop here. Turn my metronome off now. Great, just a very, very basic drum pattern. Of course, we could have just as easily double clicked in one of these empty clip slots and drawn in our notes here. This is another technique that we covered previously. We could do a kick here, snare here, kick here, snare here. And we could even put in our hi-hats just like this. And I think this is close to the same exact pattern. I'm just double clicking to input notes. And then I can click play on this track, which is a bit louder because of our velocities, which I believe we spoke about in a previous lesson. If we didn't, real quick, I could just highlight all these notes, clicking and dragging, turning them all blue. And I could bring down these little nodes here, which affect our velocity or how hard or how soft the notes are being played. Now these two clips should match a little closer. Great, space bar to stop. Okay, that was really easy recording drums, but let's record an instrument to just go along with that. If we go over to instruments and load up any of these synths. Now, like we've done in previous lessons, we could just click on a synth name, drag it onto a MIDI track, and have sort of a default sound for that synth, or we could open up this folder and choose a preset. Now, I'm gonna go into analog here and choose from piano and keys. Analog is one of Ableton Live's synthesizers. Let's preview this electronic piano sound. That sounds pretty good. I'm gonna click it and drag it onto the second available MIDI track. 
It is armed, as I can tell down here. And if I put my hands on the keys, go an octave up. Great. Now what I'll do is I'll hit play on the drum track. Let me just play a chord. Great, let's record that. You wanna follow along with me? That's A to F to D to B flat. Then we'll do E flat, D, B flat, G. I'm gonna hit the record button and let's record along with the drums. Ready, go. Great, so now we have two loops here, a drum loop and an instrument loop. Everything we just done was covered in the previous lessons, but now I wanna to start to get into how we can mix these sounds and how can we adjust the volumes, how can we adjust where they are in our ears, either left or right, that's called panning, and what are these send knobs all about? So let's go for it. First of all, let's click play again and hear our sounds. Now before, if I double click on this track, you remember that we highlighted these notes and we adjusted the velocity, which did have an effect on volume per se. You could hear as I raised it, they got louder. And now as I lower this, they will get softer. But we're not necessarily changing the volume of the whole track. We're just changing how hard or soft those drums got played which you can use for a type of volume effect. But if we wanna just change the general volume, say we want hard hitting drums, we just want them to be a little bit lower in volume. That's what the mixer down here is for. We touched on this previously, but today we're really gonna get into it. So if I bring this down, we can see that it's zero right here. If we bring this down, obviously, the sound will get softer and softer. I'm just clicking and dragging. Now I might want to keep the drums at about zero, but say, hey, the piano is a bit too loud. Well, same goes for the electric piano here. Let's just bring it down in volume a bit. That's really, really basic. And every track that you see will have a volume fader on it. And if I hit tab, we remember arrangement view, even though we're working in session view at the moment, it is important to note that these volume faders look a bit different over here in arrangement view. They look like these uh, orange bars where you can actually see the number a bit more clearly. Another uh, important thing to know or a little uh, kind of workflow thing is if you double click on a parameter, usually, and this isn't just for volume, usually it will go back to its default state. So you can see as I double click these, they go back to zero, their default state. One thing to think about for mixing here that I see a lot of beginners do, if you want something to get louder, I would recommend not bringing this volume fader above zero. In rare, rare cases, would you ever see me do that? I'm gonna Command Z, put it back to zero. Instead, what you could do, you might say, oh, the drum should be louder, right? But instead, what I would do, Command Z, is actually make the other elements softer. This will really help you down the line with getting your mixes to sound better and more professional and will avoid any kind of distortion, unwanted distortion, unwanted clipping, things like that. Okay, so that's pretty straightforward how to use volume, right? I think that's pretty easy. But I wanna demonstrate panning. And to do this, I want to do something that is specific to using a drum instrument or a drum rack. You'll notice that this track is unique because it has this little arrow here. The electric piano doesn't have that. If I open up the drum rack like that, wow, maybe this looks a little overwhelming, but it's actually not. Just take a look and notice that each individual part of the drum kit is listed here. And now each one of them has their own volume fader, as well as their own pan control and a bunch of other controls as well. But let's just focus on volume and panning, which we have not talked about yet. If I click play, now we see which elements we've been using. We've been using kick, 
we've been using the snare, we've been using this hi-hat. Now it does sound like the hi-hat is already panned a little bit to our left, but let's make that more extreme by using this pan control. It's at C right now for center, but if I click and drag down, I will push it more and more to the left. Let's start at center, bring it further left over time. or push it a bit more to the right. This is another thing that's helpful for your mixing. I'm gonna just keep it maybe 10 L. And just to demonstrate it further, I'm gonna push the snare maybe 10 right. It gives me more of a spatial feel to our sound. Now, I'm gonna close this drum rack and just point out that panning isn't only available for a drum rack in this expanded view. It's available on every single track um, right here. This knob is our pan. So center, we're at 12 o'clock, uh, but let's start panning the electric piano. Let's pan it to the right. And you'll actually see this bar start to change where it's heavier on the right or heavier on the left. Now for an instrument like electric piano, I wouldn't necessarily do that, which is why I demonstrated it for you on parts of the drum kit, where it's more likely that the different drum sounds would be in different spaces all around you. Okay, so we've covered volume and panning, and there's one more very basic mixing aspect here that often I think gets overlooked and can be a little bit confusing, and that's gonna be these send knobs right here. These knobs, A and B, actually correlate to these tracks over here. If we double click on this track, we will see the audio effect reverb. And if we double click on this track, of course, we will see the audio effect delay. If you don't know what either of these are, don't worry, we're gonna talk about that in a moment. The reason it's called sends, or at least I think this is the reason, is because we are gonna send this audio, the audio from the drum track. Let's solo it for a moment, clicking the S for solo. Let's send this audio to the reverb. And you hear as I dial up that A knob, we're hearing more reverb and we're also now seeing a signal on that reverb track. Let's dial it back down and now let's send the drums to the delay. You'll notice on the B track, we're starting to get a signal and we're hearing that delay signal. Gets more and more over time. Now, one quick thing that's important to note here that is something we're actually gonna cover in the next lesson. You can add audio effects like reverb or delay directly onto your individual instruments. You'll even see in the corner, it says drop audio effects here. We could drop a reverb right on the drum kit instead of using this return track, the reverb over here. But one of the advantages and one of the mixing techniques that a lot of producers use is utilizing the return track so that we can hear the original drums in addition to a reverb signal two things happening in parallel. There's the original drums and there's the reverb happening at the same time. Whereas if we put the reverb directly on the drums, those two things are no longer happening in parallel. The reverb is now right on the drums. We no longer get that clean drum signal. So that's why you might use these send knobs here, sending to these return tracks over here. That is why these get used. So for right now, as a beginner, these are just quick and easy ways for you to affect your sounds in an easy way. Um, by default, it's uh, reverb and delay. In future installments, we'll get into maybe using different effects on these. And also in the next installment, we're gonna get into how to change how these effects actually sound, as well as putting sounds directly onto your tracks. So let's add a little bit of reverb to our drums. Sure, that's fine. And let's add a little reverb to our electric piano. Let's add a lot. Let's add some delay as well. So now we know how to adjust volumes for individual tracks 
as well as how to adjust the panning, the left and right pan in a drum rack. We can do that not only on the kind of full drum kit, but we can expand it to adjust it for individual instruments like we did for the snare, panning it a bit to the right, and we did for the hi-hats, panning it a bit to the left. We also learned how to send sound from sends, from these send knobs over to these return tracks, reverb and delay. And the next thing I want to talk about is how some of these instruments actually come with these macro knobs down here in the corner that can help us further shape our sounds by default. But I'm going to do that after we talk about today's sponsor, DistroKid. DistroKid is the easiest way to get your music on the most popular platforms like Spotify, Apple Music, Tidal, even TikTok and more. I have been using DistroKid since well before they became a sponsor of the channel. And the thing that I like the most about DistroKid is that it has an annual subscription. You pay one time and you can release as much music as you want. I think that's really inspiring. Their motto of be prolific, I think for me as an artist to be able to release music whenever I want throughout the year and not have to worry about paying every single time is great. But besides distribution, they have a bunch of other really cool features, which I told you about one last week. I'm going to tell you about another one right now. So one cool feature they have for their artists is called promo cards. It's an easy way to generate promotional graphics for your upcoming release. There's different styles depending on your genre, just depending on your taste. All you have to do is go to your release, click to generate your promo cards, select the ones you like and download them. I especially know that as artists, we are forced to wear a lot of different hats. Video creator, music producer, mixing, mastering, graphic designer, that is probably my least favorite aspect. So the fact that I can generate these high quality promotional graphics with DistroKid's promo cards is really, really convenient for me as an artist. And it's one of the many features available to you with a DistroKid account. So sign up today, use my link in the description. You can get yourself 7% off. Of course, if you support the sponsor, you're supporting the channel. But with this sponsor in particular, you are moving forward in your musical career, taking one step further to getting your music out there and getting tools that are gonna help you get your music out there and promote it. Thank you to DistroKid for sponsoring today's video. All right, back to recording. We have this very basic idea and I told you I wanna talk about these macro knobs, but let's add one more layer to our sounds here. We're not even using audio tracks today, so I'm gonna click on three, delete it, delete the second one. Now let's drop in another instrument. I'm gonna go into instrument rack and find some other instruments here. And let's maybe just look for um, maybe another synth keys track. Basic bell keys, sure. Let's drop that in, click and drag, great. Now notice these eight knobs here. We're gonna talk about those in a minute. You'll also notice there's some knobs over here on the drum kit as well, but let's record on top of this sound. Let's go up an octave. Now what I notice when I start playing that is that it does not fit really well at all with the sounds that we already have. It might be sound selection, but it also might have to do with some mixing elements. So first of all, this track is much, much louder than our electric piano. Let's use the mixer and bring it down. Okay, mix wise, it's a lot better, but are there things we can do to shape the sound? In some of Ableton Live's instruments, and I specifically pulled from the instrument rack category for a reason, because these are sounds that are racked together with groups of effects like filters, like additional reverbs or overdrive, which is what we see here on this instrument. If you don't know what a filter is, I think it'll become clear once I play you the sound. and you hear the change that happens. We're gonna talk more about effects in the next installment, but you can hear that high frequencies are getting rolled off there. I like to roll off some high frequencies, so that filter's great. 
There's a second filter here too. Cool, I'm gonna keep that rolled back though. Awesome. We've already transformed the sound a bit. Let's give it a bit more reverb. There's even echo. Let me dial this up, see what it sounds like. Oh, that's actually pretty cool. Actually, I really like this call and response thing that's going on here. And you can see that by adjusting the sound a bit using these macro knobs, that's what these are called, macro knobs, these eight knobs here, uh, we've actually made the sound fit a bit. And I do encourage you to experiment more and more with some of these sounds. Look at what live is already giving you before you jump in into adding more and more things. Now, I did specifically do this on the instrument rack. Don't forget instrument rack category and pulled instruments from here, because if we try to do this on our electric piano, there are actually no macro knobs here, and we're not really going to get into the fine tuning and adjustments of some of the more complicated synth parameters involved here. But if you pull from instrument rack, you should be given a decent selection of audio effects that you can adjust. Let's record that musical idea and then adjust the sound even further. One, two, ready, go. Now, I made a mistake recording here, but that gives us a good opportunity to review, stop recording. Uh, we did review this in a previous installment, but I can either double click on uh, the clip here to see my note view, or I can use this menu down here to switch between seeing my audio effects, my macros, my instrument, or seeing the MIDI. I can see that I clearly recorded for one bar too long. We should only be four bars, not five. So I'll just grab these flags and move them down to an even five. And now, we have an even loop. Great. So, macros, we can still adjust them. If I turn up the release, my notes will actually last longer. If I turn off the attack, turn up the attack, my notes will more fade in rather than have a plucky beginning. That makes them a little more dreamy. Now let's jump over to our drum rack here. Now there are not eight things that we can control. You can see that macros four through eight are just blank. There's nothing happening here. But macros one through three actually will have some type of effect on the drum sound. There's a little tiny bit of reverb there in the background if you can hear it if we adjust the pool. I believe Sherman, these are very subtle effects. It sounds like Sherman may be adding a little bit of compression or something, which is something that we will talk about in the next installment, but slap, I'm certain this is gonna have more of a drastic effect. It probably sounds to you similar to like an echo or a delay, right? And you're right, it's just very short. Let's, let's just dial in a little bit of slap there. And let's play this with all the other sounds. Now, the magic of this, and this is setting you up for our next installment, next week's lesson. The magic of this is, if I go back to my bell instrument here, we see these eight macro knobs. This is kind of like Ableton Live helping us do things in an easy way. But if I click this button here, it will expand the entire instrument. So now we're seeing all the nuts and bolts of the synth. We are also seeing, if we scroll down here, I can double click to open these, the different effects that are involved. So you see our echo device, you see our reverb here, and you will notice, let me actually double click to minimize some of this stuff so it's easier to see. 
On Echo, for instance, as we adjust the macro knob on Echo, you will see this knob here adjust. That is the dry wet on the Echo device in here. So you don't need to understand any of that right now. I just want to plant that seed in your head that these macro knobs are controlling things under the hood. You know, your car, it drives, right? I know nothing about cars, but I know if I get in and I start it and it goes, something is happening under the hood to make everything work. That's kind of what's happening with Ableton's macros. And you can hear that they have very transformative effects on your sounds. It's a good way to start using presets to build tracks that you like, but also know that these sounds can be adjusted. You don't have to use them exactly how they sound out of the box. And in the next installment, we're gonna talk specifically about some of these audio effects, which you can pull from the library over here, by the way, make adjustments on your own, not rely on these macros, even change them over time so sounds can evolve. That's in the next installment. This is a monthly series, so make sure you stay tuned for that. Turn on notifications so you don't miss a future episode. Make sure you're subscribed, of course. Give this video a thumbs up. If you want to support the channel, there's a lot of ways. You can do super thanks in the comments. You can also become a channel member, which gets you a lot of perks. Uh, you can submit music for track reviews, attend our members only workshops. We just did a couple on finding your unique voice as an artist and how to study the music that you love so that you can sort of recreate some of those aspects. And we have more planned in the future. Another way you can support the channel is of course supporting our sponsor DistroKid. I have to thank DistroKid again for supporting this series. Use the link in the description to get your 7% off DistroKid, get your music everywhere. Spotify, Apple Music, TikTok, all those cool places, as well as all the other cool artist features that they have available. All right, that's it. I will see you in a future video, uploads every Sunday, but the next installment will be next month. Thank you all so much for watching. This has been Tatro. Have a good one.